Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things, Rio? I hope it's all great and fantastic. How was your Christmas? How was your holiday? Did you have a good time? Did you get lots of awesome presents? I did. Uh, I was actually out of town this weekend. If you watched Friday's episode, that was pre-recorded because Em and I went to visit her family for the weekend and I don't advertise those things. Um, and her family decided to, uh, they found my, my Amazon wish list and decided me to just to get me a bunch of stuff off my Amazon wish list, which is what my sister and my nieces did. It was perfect because I just got tools and video games, which is like the greatest Christmas ever, right? Basically all toys. <laughs> uh, I did get a few shirts, but I got a bunch of tools and I'll show you those. Uh, one thing in here I bought for myself, it was on my porch when I got home, which is good. But the first thing we got was a 16 gauge um, finish nailer. This is something I've been wanting for a while because I have a lot of trim work to do upstairs. A lot of trim work to do down here, but also um, doing that rustic pine furniture. That's all you need, like a 16 gauge nailer and uh, some glue and, you know, whatever. Uh, I'll show you what's in here in a second. That one's kind of, oh, well, there is um, acid brushes. Acid brushes make great glue brushes, and I just throw them away. Love those. Absolutely love those. Um, oh. Mag, mag switch, switchable magnet. I've been wanting one of these for a long time. This is the 150 pound magnet, which is insanely tiny for its rated weight. I don't, I haven't tested it to see whether this little thing can actually pick up 150 pounds, uh, but I've wanted one of these for a long time to use as a, as a movable, like as a stop on my table saw, especially for doing thin rips. So maybe I'll show this one day how to use this to do thin rips on a table saw because I think that this is a, this is a great solution for that. So switchable magnet, that's awesome. I'm really excited about that. I actually needed it recently, so that's always good. I got a Craig router base plate and leveling uh, kit. This basically has like an undermount system so you can level the base and I plan on putting it in the wing of my table saw. I'm gonna make myself an, a router table there. I haven't, I tore my old router table apart like three months ago with the intention of if I ever need to use my router again, I'll have to build a new router table. And I put all that stuff on my wish list thinking when that day comes, I'll buy it. Now I don't have to, they got it for me. Uh, new countersink bits. I've been using a steel countersink bit for a long time. These, this style, the 90 degree like circular style, these are actually made for wood. Uh, so I'm really excited to use these and see how they perform, especially in comparison to the, the steel cutting countersink I've been using. Quick clamps. I've never really used my quick clamps. I have some 24 inch, they're just too big. But uh, I worked on a project with M's dad. Uh, we, we built a dresser for her brother and we used those a lot and I really fell in love with them. And then we went shopping one day and I saw those and uh, Oh, I can't show you this on camera. I have to hide this. Quick, don't look. Um, that's for my kid. Uh, we went shopping one day and saw those and thought, that would be really cool to have. So we've been talking about hand planes lately. Um, M's mom has a craft store business, and so due to that business, she does a lot of antiquing, and for her birthday, that's what she wanted to do. So me and Em went up, and me and her parents uh, and her went shopping, antiquing, and I found this old wooden-bodied hand plane in excellent condition. This is probably usable right now. The blade would need to be sharpened. Um, it's got some chips. It needs to be reground. But this is an excellent little, you know, wooden-bodied hand plane that I found. And I looked at it a few times, and I thought about buying it. I think they had like 20 or 25 dollars on it, and I was just like, nah, I'm gonna pass. But uh, what a cool piece. I might fix it up. In fact, the same day we went and I found that, I bought this little guy. Uh, this is actually a molding plane that does rounds, uh, roundovers or bead moldings. Um, and I really like this because I don't see a lot of these. Um, 
These, I kind of see a bunch, but these are usually cracked and pretty beat up. Um, so I found both of these in the same day. I ended up buying this one, and I left this one behind, and they went back and got it for me. So that's super duper amazing. I'm really excited about that. Um, I don't know if I'm going to... I'll probably never use it, and I don't know if I'm going to restore it or just... I'm probably just going to leave it like it is. I need to build some sort of display for these. Um, and then lastly is the package that I got for myself. What are we at? We're at five minutes. We'll talk about this. Um, I mentioned that I've been wanting a plane, and I didn't know what I wanted, and um, more than one of you suggested to look for an old Stanley plane because all of the modern-style planes, like the... Wood River or the Lee Valley or Lee Nielsen or whatever it's called. Uh, all those planes are just trying to emulate the Stanley, and so you might as well get a Stanley. And I said, you're right, you know. But the problem is, I, I've, I've searched around here. I've searched lots of antique stores. Every time I go, I mean, I found wooden planes, but I very, very rarely find the planes that I want, which is a number four and a number five and a half. Those are the only two I want. And on eBay, they go for, you know, they go for money. $50, $80, $100. Um, the Stanley 4, which is what's in this box, uh, usually goes for around 80 bucks. And that's in, you know, the, the problem is, you're just, I'm basing a purchase off of some pictures online and trusting that the seller is going to send me what's pictured. So you never really know. Um, but I decided to take the chance, and I found this guy. Um, this is a Stanley number no. four made in England. This is an English model. And the seller seemed to be pretty trustworthy. He seems to have a bunch of these. He's in Pennsylvania area. And it looks like he collects these, restores them, and then sells them. So this one has been cleaned up. Um, he did an okay job. I'll probably resand this tote. Uh, in fact, he might have made this tote. I don't think that's original wood. Uh, it's also loose. But... I decided to take the chance, and first glance, I think this is going to be a great plane. I haven't, you know, obviously haven't checked it. Now, this is an English model, and this is probably, who knows, like 60s, 70s. This is not a World War II era sweetheart Stanley plane, but I only, I think I only paid 50 bucks shipped for this, or maybe 60, uh, which is a damn good price for an English-made plane. And, and um, because I bought an English-made Stanley, I decided that I wanted an English five and a half, and I found one for less than a hundred dollars. The problem with the five and a half is they uh, the the they were a rare plane. They were a very rare plane, and so the Stanley five and a halfs that you find on eBay typically go for more than a new Wood River. Um, they're they're going for three hundred dollars or something like that, two fifty to three hundred dollars. But I managed to find a 60s, 70s era model Stanley English 5.5 from the UK. I got it shipped to me for 90 bucks. Um, so I'll have a matching set of similar era English made Stanleys, a 4 and a 5.5, and, and I'm perfectly happy with that. I think that's super amazing. Um, hopefully the one that's coming from England looks this nice because this, this is really nice. I just need to do some touch up on the knob and the tote and I'll take it apart and make sure it's cleaned up. Um, you know, it looks completely serviceable right out of the box. It's just these, this needs, this needs a little bit more attention. It doesn't feel great in the hand, but I think it's going to be a good serviceable plane. So regardless of whether, you know, there's a lot of people talk about, um, the English models were not as well made. They were cast questionably lots of the beds were warped uh, for my purposes I really wanted the five and a half as a more of a small size jointer and I don't necessarily need it to be like super tuned in I don't need perfectly accurate sides maybe one day I'll make a shooting board but I don't do that kind of work I really just needed a good you know a small jointer plane which is what the five and a half is for that can also do panels uh, that can, that can just you know, I do a lot of small panels, and getting glue edge is perfect is difficult. So having a having that five and a half to do that with will be perfect. And then you know, a finishing plane or a smoothing plane like this number four will be perfect. So I'm really excited about this. And I, when I get the five and a half, I'll show it to you. Also, maybe we'll do like a little comparison video. Um, so yeah, I mean, I I got video games. I got four new Switch games, which I was really excited about. I got an immersion blender. Uh, I've never really had a blender, and I decided I wanted something that wasn't a giant, you know, shelf piece. So I got that. And um, 
uh, we got uh, we got a couple of joint gifts, you know, uh, like a freezer or we got a um, wet vac for the for the uh, the hardwood. So really exciting weekend. I had a really good time. I I do enjoy spending time up there. Um, they're about an hour and a half from here, and uh, the whole family is just you know there's a there's a lot of quality time uh, when we go up there with her family and her family enjoys being a family uh, that, that's that's what it comes down to right so and I feel very welcomed and appreciated which is awesome so that's what I had or that's what I got what'd you get let me know in the comments did anything excite you this year I love it when I get to be like a kid again and open cool tools and, and video games and feel like I really won Christmas you know what I mean I'm not just getting underwear or whatever so Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends, wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know to sound smart is jawbone. It's a verb meaning to attempt to get someone to do something through persuasion rather than force. No matter how much he jawboned, Carl could not get Allison to sell her stock prior to the unveiling of the company's disastrous new line of Parvo fashion. Par well, I just said that wrong. Jawbone. J-A-W-B-O-N-E. That's interesting. I've never heard that as a verb. Now, how much he jawboned. Now, and there's a comma there. So it's not like how much he jawboned Carl. It was how much he jawboned, comma, Carl could not get Allison to sell. That's, that's a really interesting verb.